Amen. Praise the Lord, church. It is an honor to be with you once again. I thank God that he has brought us to another Friday. Amen. I, I pray that everyone finds themselves in good health. Everyone finds themselves blessed this Friday. I'm, I'm excited to share what the Lord has placed in my heart today. Amen. I, I want to just take a moment, though, and give God thanks for everything that he's doing in our church, everything that he's doing in our lives. Amen. God is has been moving in a mighty way. And it's just exciting to see everything that God's doing. Amen. I thank God for our pastor. I thank God for our leadership. And I, I want to encourage you, church, to continue to pray. Amen. For one another as well. Continue to pray for the needs that we know uh, we have in this church. Amen. Pray for our pastor. Pray for those that are sick. Amen. And continue to rejoice with those that have been healed and those that have been blessed in a mighty way. Amen. Hallelujah. I, I'm excited to, to get right into the message today. And I'd like to turn our attention to Psalms chapter 23, verse 1 through 6 this evening. Amen. It's, we're going to be starting at uh, Psalms chapter 23, 1 through 6. And we're going to read six scriptures right here, a familiar portion of scripture. Verse 1 says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of the righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest me a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And we're going to read two more short scriptures as we go to the book of Acts, Acts chapter 7, verse 30. Amen. And we hear Stephen talking right here. And he says, And when the forty years were expired, there appeared unto him in the, in the wilderness of Mount Sinai, uh, an angel of the Lord in in a flame of fire in a bush. And when Moses saw it, he wondered at the sight. And as he drew near to behold it, the voice of the Lord came unto him. Amen. And let's go ahead and go before the Lord right now in a word of prayer. Amen. Tonight, I'd like to entitle this message, I Still Remember. Amen. I still remember. Lord, we thank you for everything that you're doing. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be in your presence once again. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for just allowing us to come before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I pray, Lord, that you would continue to bless us, that you would continue to guide us, and you would continue to direct us in everything that we do. Lord, allow your anointing to be upon me today, Lord, as we go into your word, Lord, and we bring forth a message. Jesus, we thank you, and we be sure to give you all the honor and all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. How, how many are excited for what God's doing, amen, in the days that we're living in? Amen. I, I know that as much as it is scary sometimes, as much as it is, amen, that we see the world changing around us and we see times, amen, moving fast, amen, it, it may get a little worrisome sometimes, but it is truly exciting times that we're living in. Amen. Gro growing up in the church, amen, you you hear stories of uh, great men of God that have come before you, great women of God, how God poured out his spirit in mighty ways, amen. You, you, hear, uh, you hear the legends, amen. You, you hear uh, that were actual facts where the house of the Lord was filled, amen, an hour before service even started, and how it, people came ready, amen, just to worship, just to dance, amen. How altar calls would not, not just end, amen, Amen. At any time, but people would be at the altar for hours. Amen. And, and these are things that I've heard growing up. I've I've heard. Amen. I've even been blessed enough to even experience them. Amen. Where the altar call is so heavy, the presence of God is just so thick, where you don't want to move from His presence. Amen. How how many ever experienced that? How many ever had the privilege? Amen. To just be in that presence of God, where it's unmovable. Amen. 
And e- even whether you were born in the church or you were born in the world, amen, you hear stories, you, amen, you, you hear times of greatness, you hear of times of great triumph, and you hear of times of great sorrow, you hear of times of great defeat, amen, you hear of times where maybe somebody that you knew, somebody that you loved was on the mountain high, Amen. Or even in the valley low, where they were the victorious one, or they were the one that was going through something. Amen. But the but these stories are told. Amen. And these memories are shared, and they're passed on from generation to generation. They're passed on from father to sons, and mothers to daughters. Amen. From grandparents to grandkids. Amen. And these things, a, a lot of time when they br- they're brought forth as they begin to go through generations, sometimes they could even lose the, the feeling. They could even lose that same awe and that same wonder. Amen. Something that may have been amazing to you, amen, may not hit the same way that, that it hit you. It may, may not affect somebody else the same way that it affected you. And the only way that I, I could see this somewhat relatable, amen, is old movies, amen. Uh, I remember when I was younger, my father used to share with me a lot of the old Western movies, amen, uh, old classic movies. And when I was younger, I'd be sitting there watching them and not really understanding what's going on. You know, I, I, I grew up on movies where there's a lot of explosions and the faster things are moving the more things don't make sense the greater they are to enjoy and not just take time and enjoy a movie not just take time and listen to to the storyline amen but as i began to grow older amen those old westerns those old movies that had a lot of talking amen those old movies that had a lot of dialogue as you sit down and pay attention to them you begin to see man this is some great entertainment right here this is some quality material amen and it's something that you couldn't really appreciate when you were younger, amen, and and I'm gonna I'm gonna tie it in somehow, amen. But you know, as a young man, sometimes as a young person, sometimes you don't really see the value. You it could be hard to miss the value of what somebody is offering. It could be easy to miss the value of what somebody's giving to you, what somebody's talking about, amen. Sometimes, amen, we're just not ready for it. Sometimes we just haven't had the revelation, and we just haven't been through enough to be able to relate to it maybe but thank god that god's word amen and words that our parents have spoken over us words that our leaders and mentors have have spoken over us amen have have stuck with us and and resonated with us amen so that years down the line when something happens in our life or something comes up we remember the instruction that somebody gave us so long ago amen even as we look into the Bible, amen, Stephen in chapter 7 was talking about, amen, just the history of Israel a little bit. He was talking about Abraham all the way to Jacob, amen, and he was even talking about Joseph, amen, and he began to talk about Moses. And, I, and as I was reading that part, amen, about Moses, if you know the story of Moses, and even Stephen explains it a, a little bit as well, that Moses one day began, he wanted to check on his people he wanted to check on the israelites amen he wanted to check on those that were in bondage and he saw a man getting beaten he saw a man getting abused amen so so much that his heart felt sorrow amen his heart felt bad so he ended up correcting the man amen and what happened was he killed him right so Moses, amen, goes and he thinking that he'll be accepted, but he was rejected, amen. And he explains the story of Moses, if you're not familiar with it, how Moses went into the wilderness, amen. Moses was a mighty man of God. For 40 days, I mean for 40 years, I apologize, for 40 years he was in the wilderness. For 40 years, amen, he was separated and then God called him in a secret place, amen, through a burning bush, amen. And God God sent him back out, and Moses was a blessing to the people of God. Amen. And we see many stories, many men of God inside the Bible. 
amen, with great victories such as Moses, amen, with great testimonies such as Moses, amen. We, we even see Job, amen, that had an awesome spirit, that had an awesome experience. And you might say that's a little contradicting because Moses went, I mean, Job went through one of the biggest trials that any man could have gone through, amen. He lost everything that he owned. He lost everything that he had. And then when he finally cried out to God, amen, and said, and, and he was broke, and God answered him in a whirlwind, amen, showed him how great he was, amen. He, and even Samuel, amen, hearing God's voice, David being anointed at such a young age and killing Goliath, amen. We, we see so many stories of great men of God doing great things things, amen, for the honor and glory of God. We see, we hear of battles won and valleys crossed. We hear of them going into promised lands, amen, into promised lands. We hear of great works and moments that stood out in history that actually happened, amen, and all these great things, amen, but as I began to reflect on it, amen, I began to look and I began to just see what what were these men's greatest moments, amen. For David was, was his greatest moment when he stood above Goliath, amen, when he had killed him with a slingshot and a rock, amen, was the greatest moment, amen, when he was teen, when he was even anointed teen and the oil fell on his head and dripped down, amen, his body, what was his greatest moment? Was Moses' greatest moment when he stood before the sea as as Pharaoh was behind him and he put it and he God told him, Amen, to put his rod forth, Amen, and the sea split wide open, Amen. What was Moses' greatest moment? Amen. Was it when when his staff turned into a snake? Amen. Was it when the river turned into a blood and when it turned into blood? What were these men of God? God's greatest moments. And as you begin to even reflect a, about your own life, amen, and you see all the many things that God has done in your life, you see the many things that God has even brought you through and how he has kept you, amen. And I know that we have victories that we've won. We have victories, amen, that that we've accomplished through God, amen. I can tell you about times, amen, where I was sick or when one of my friends or one of my family members was sick, amen, and God allowed me to anoint them. God allowed me to pray for them, and they were healed, amen. I can tell you about the times when I had financial needs, amen, and I didn't know a way out. I didn't have an answer, and God stepped in and turned the situation around. When I needed a job, when I needed finances, amen, and God was faithful, he gave me a raise. Amen. He put it in the in the my co-worker and my boss's heart to give me a raise. I can tell you about these great victories. Amen. And as you even begin to reflect, you may begin to think about what were your greatest moments in God? What were the moments that stood out to you? What were the moments, amen, that can't compare to nothing? Amen. And as I was remembering this, I, I looked at Acts chapter 7, verse 30. Amen. And it talks about when 40 years were were expired there appeared to him in the wilderness amen the flame of fire in a bush amen and just that moment right there amen it, it must have been an encounter like he've ne he's never experienced it must have been an encounter amen that he's never seen before yes Moses amen the same one that was saved amen from being killed when he was just a baby yes Moses amen the same one that was taken in by Pharaoh's daughter and raised, amen. Moses, the man of God, amen, that's had so many blessings now is alone, amen, in the wilderness as he goes into a mountain, amen, and he sees a, a fire, amen, he sees a bush that is on fire that is not being consumed, and as he walks towards the bush, amen, he hears the voice of the Lord, and it says, hallelujah, it tells him to remove his, his shoes, amen, because he is on holy ground, amen, as as we go to the book of Acts real quick, amen. Acts chapter 7, verse 31, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
saying, I am the, and when Moses saw it, he wondered at the sight as he drew near to behold it, the voice of the Lord came unto him saying, I am the God of thy fathers, the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. Then Moses trembled and durst not behold. Then said the Lord to him, put off thy shoes from the feet for the place where thou stand is holy ground. Amen. Uh, what an experience this must have been. Amen. What an experience when nobody else was around. Amen. A lot of the times we, we like to think the greatest moments that we've ever had, the greatest moments that a person may have ever encountered. Amen. Was when everybody was around to watch it. Was when our fathers and our mothers and our brothers and our sisters were there to support us. Amen. In the victories. Amen. Where we came out triumphant and we came out. Amen. With, with our hands raised and we came out a new person, amen. Whether it was at a football game when you were younger, amen, or a sports activity, amen. Or it was something that you were just proud of. Maybe you sang a special song. Maybe you preached your first service, amen. Maybe... Maybe you gave a word, amen. I, whatever your most triumphant time was, amen. We may look at those things at our, as our greatest moments and the greatest times in our life where we were able to share with somebody else, where we were able to share an experience with a loved one, where we were able to share an experience, amen, with a brother or a sister, amen. But I want to ask somebody here today if you remember your greatest moment, amen. And I'm not talking right now about your greatest victory amen your greatest moment could have even come at the time of your greatest defeat amen when you were down and when you were hurt and you had nobody else to turn to when you had no answer amen and you had no solution amen i'm here to tell somebody amen that i honestly believe that man's greatest moment amen comes when he decides to trust in the king of kings and the lord of lords Lords. Amen. I honestly believe that there is something special, amen, about the times, amen, where, you, where nobody else is around. Yes, it is a blessing. Don't misunderstand me. It is a blessing when you have your brother on your side, amen. It is a blessing, amen, when you got somebody backing you up, when you're in a prayer meeting with one another, amen, and God's moving, God's healing, God's restoring, amen. It is a blessing, amen, but there's something special that happens amen when a man or a woman of God finds himself alone in that secret place amen in that secret space amen where nobody else is around and you're you're having a one-on-one -on -one encounter amen with the father in the king of teens hallelujah I honestly believe amen that there's something special that happens amen and something special that takes place amen you we look for we we look for companionship and we look for relationships, amen, because it's nice to experience monumental things, amen, and it's nice to experience big life-changing moments with one another, amen, but what about the greatest life-changing moment that's ever happened in your life, amen, that day, amen, when God changed your life around, amen, only you remember the situation that you were in, only you remember how tore up you were, or even how blessed Blessed you were, amen. Only you remember, amen. But I'm here to encourage somebody and I'm here to tell somebody that I still remember, amen. I still remember what it feels like, amen, to hurt, amen. I still remember what it feels like, amen, what depression may have looked like, amen. I'm not saying that I have it anymore, but it gives me a reason to be thankful, amen. You, Amen. The old man is dead, yes, the old man is gone, amen. Amen. Who I was before I was saved. Amen. What I did. Amen. I thank God that it's been covered by the blood. Amen. I thank God that it's been washed clean. Amen. But I'm here to tell somebody but I, that I still remember what God has done in my life. And I still remember how it felt. Amen. When I dropped down to my knees for the very first time and my heart began to break. Amen. And my soul ate. Hallelujah. 
hallelujah, but something supernatural came before me, amen, and put a bandage and put his loving arms around me, amen. I still remember today, hallelujah. And I think about how David, amen, and these men of God, and I, I know I'm jumping around here a little bit today. I pray that you stay with me, amen. But I, I, I think about how David, amen, men of God like David, men of God like Moses, amen, as they grew older, amen, and they began, amen, to, to grow old with age. If they ever just sat for a moment and pondered, amen, they ever just sat for a moment and remembered, amen, everything that God had done for them, everything that God had brought them out of, amen, everything that God had, had blessed them with, amen. David is, is one of the men, amen, in the Bible that actually writes songs giving God the glory, amen. He, David not only wrote songs, amen, to give God glory, but he wrote songs, amen, when he was going through trials, amen. He wrote songs, amen, at different seasons of his life, amen, to reflect what he, what what stage of the life of his life he was in amen in psalms 23 verse 1 amen in Psalms chapter 23, it talks about how the Lord is my shepherd, amen, and I shall not want, amen. It taught, it begins to explain to us, amen, that God keeps us, amen, and God protects us through everything, that he restoreth my soul, amen. He leadeth me in the path of the righteousness for his name's sake, amen. That's verse 3. And then in chapter 4, one of the most known scriptures in the Bible, it says, Yea, though I walk through the valley, amen. Yea, though I walk through the valley, amen. And I know there, there may be a deeper meaning to that, amen. Valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, amen. But I'm here to remind somebody as well what a valley is, amen. A valley is a narrow road, amen. A valley is a tight squeeze sometimes. A valley is something that might not be comfortable. A valley is a straight path, amen. A valley is a place where, where you can't go into it with a giant group, amen. You have to go maybe one by one. You may have to go, amen, on your own sometimes. Your brother will still be behind you. Your brother will still be in front of you, amen. But you, sometimes you got to just trust and keep on walking. you got to trust and keep on stepping, amen. And as apostolates, amen, we walk on the straight and narrow, amen, the 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 path that we have chosen, the path that we have been the opportunity, amen, to take in the days that we live in. Amen. It, it's not a path with multiple options. It's not a path, amen, where we get to choose and have it our way. Amen. Hallelujah. There's a sacrifice that comes with living righteous. There's a sacrifice that comes with living holy. There's a sacrifice that comes with being a godly man and woman. Amen. But let me tell you that the sacrifice is well worth it. The sacrifice, amen, is worth, amen, the reward. Amen. Because our God God has been too good to us. Our God has been too kind to us. Amen. And it is worth, amen, walking through that valley sometimes. Amen. It is worth walking through that dark time sometimes. It is worth walking through that pain. Amen. Sometimes it is worth it. Amen. Because the Bible says, hallelujah, for thou art with me. Amen. Even when I'm walking through the valley, even when I'm going through hard times, even when I may have sickness and when I may have pain when I may have hurt in my body thou art with me Lord no matter what my situation looks like no matter what the circumstances look like thou art with me hallelujah Oh, and I believe in these times, amen, when we may get a little lonely, when we may not hear, amen, the voice of God so clearly as we once have, when we may not be able, amen, to see the path in front of us so clearly or so brightly lit, amen. I believe during these times, amen, when that phrase comes in more than ever, amen, for thou art with me, amen. We got a church in the days that we're living in, family life's 
sinner, I believe that you believe that God is with you. Amen. No matter what you're going through, no matter what it feels like, can you still believe that God is with you? And this is where it ties in. Amen. Can you remember? Amen. When it gets hard to remember, can you look back? Amen. And reflect on the testimony that God has already given you. Amen. And begin to realize just how good he's been in your past and remind yourself thou art with me Lord you were with me amen when I was at my lowest Lord Jesus you were with me when I was at my greatest moment you were with me amen in every good time and every bad time before and I know surely surely you will be with me again Lord Jesus hallelujah Thou art with me here today, amen. We got to remind ourselves sometimes, amen. We can get caught up in the worries of life. We can get caught up in our current situation. We can get caught up in the things that we're going through right now. We can get caught up, amen, in what, what tomorrow brings. We can get caught up in what the media is portraying. And we can get caught up in what the politics are portraying, amen. And we can, we can forget, amen, everything that's already happened. We we could even forget the, the, the victory that God just brought us through. We could even forget, amen, everything that God just did, not just a moment of go, amen, as we get distracted and we get entangled, amen. Amen. With the with the troubles and trials. Hallelujah. But I'm telling you, church, here today, remember that that, that God is with you. Amen. No matter what valley you walk through, no matter what trial you walk through, no matter what circumstance you walk through, I want to remind you, amen, that God is with you. Amen. He has never left you and he will never forsake you. Amen. We got to remind ourselves, amen, like Joshua, amen, like God told Joshua when Moses passed away, amen, the same way I was with Moses is the the same way I'm going to be with you, Joshua. The same way I was with your father is the same way that I will be with you, son. Amen. Our God is not a God that just is able to do it one time. Amen. Our God is able to, to do miracles, signs, and wonders. Our God is able to heal the sick and save. Amen. Save those that seem to be lost without, the, without a cause. Amen. S save those that seem to have no purpose in life. Our God is able to do it. Hallelujah. God is with you. Amen. It says, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me, amen. Thou preparest a table before me, amen, it, before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup run, runneth over. And I want to proclaim this over somebody's life. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever, amen. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. I heard Pastor Sam Emery, amen, preach on a, a, a definitive statement before. Amen. And I believe there is power. Amen. When you make a statement so bold. Amen. You make a statement so strong. Amen. That doesn't just affect your life. Amen. But it affects your children's life. And it affects your grandchildren's life. And it affects the generations that are going to come after you. And it affects the generations amen that are going to be connected to you amen there is power in a statement amen when a man and a woman of God decides to stand their ground when a man and a woman of God decides amen that God has been too good to me to turn back God has been too good to me amen to look where he brought me from yes I will look back and I will rejoice that I'm no longer that man I will look back and I will give God glory that I'm no longer the man that I used to be, amen, but I am not going backwards. I am moving ahead, amen, because my soul depends on it. My children's soul depends on it. My grandchildren's soul depends on it, amen, and I got a reason to fight. I got a reason to pray. I got a reason to praise, and I got a reason to continue to lift up the name of the Lord. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Sometimes the enemy, amen, will try to come and, t- and toss you up. The enemy will try to come and play mind games with you and try to remind you, amen. Try to have you remember other things. Try to have you remember, amen, the man you were. Try to have you remember the woman you were, amen, and not use it as a testimony, but use it, amen, as something to say. How can you really say that you're worthy to praise God? How can you really say that you're worthy amen of the blood that was shed on calvary amen i'm here to tell you my brother i'm here to tell you my sister yes you've made mistakes yes you've fallen short we all have amen nobody's perfect there is but one that is perfect amen and that perfect blood was shed on calvary for you and me amen so that every mistake that has been made and every sickness that it may have come against you may have everything that may have been wrong is washed in his blood amen yes you may have made mistakes yes you may have said things amen that you didn't mean to say or that you weren't thinking about saying amen but now is the time more than ever to pick yourself up amen dust yourself off fall on your knees and repent amen fall on your knees and give God the glory amen because my brother my sister you're still living you still have breath in your lungs You still have a reason to give God praise. The battle is not over. And even if it was, I'm here to tell you that I've seen, amen. The Bible tells us how this story ends. And it says that God has all victory. God has all authority, amen. You are still able to fight. You are still able to praise. You are still able to clap your hands. You are still able to jump up and down. You are still able to do your day dance amen the the devil is a liar amen and god is the truth amen god says you are free god says you have been healed god says you have been restored and god says you are a new creature in christ hallelujah hallelujah when, when you went down in those, those waters of baptism, amen, you were no longer the same man, amen. You are no longer the same woman, amen. Your past, amen, has been covered by the blood, amen. Your past has been covered, amen, by the precious blood of Jesus Christ, amen, amen. And do not take that blood lightly, amen. I'm talking about the blood, amen, that ran red on the cross. I'm talking about the blood that is able to save I'm talking about the blood that is able to heal amen this is not just any ordinary blood amen but when this blood gushed amen when this blood ran down that tree stump when this blood ran down that cross amen it rolled down with all power and it rolled down with all authority amen this was not any ordinary man's blood amen the blood that you have been baptized in the blood that you have been saved by hallelujah it is not just an ordinary blood amen but it came with the cost amen it came with the life hallelujah it came with the purpose amen that you should not perish amen but you would have an opportunity to come to repentance and you would have an opportunity to give your life to God and be baptized and filled with the precious holy ghost Hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank God for the blood because where would we be without that blood? Where would we be, hallelujah, without that blood? Where would we be, amen? I would still be lost. I would still be confused. I would still be in my sin and my shame, amen. I would never been, amen. We would never be redeemed. There would never have been an atonement, amen, for men and women, hallelujah. But we thank thank God for the blood that was shed. We thank God for his blood. Amen. We thank God for the blood. Hallelujah. I still remember the day. Amen. When I fell down on my knees and I repented of everything, every mistake, everything that I'm, that I may have done and everything that I'm gonna, that I may do. Hallelujah. When I repented, hallelujah. I still remember the day when God filled me with this Holy Ghost. I 
I still remember the day when I found out that somebody loved me so much that he gave his life for me. I remember the day, amen, how my heart broke, amen, and I wept and I cried because I heard that an innocent man's blood was shed for me on Calvary so that I can be saved, hallelujah. But I also remember the day, amen, when I heard the good news, amen, that our God, the King of Kings, did not just stay dead. The King of Kings did not just stay in the grave, amen. But three days later, three days later, he rose, amen, with all power and authority, and he ascended into heaven, amen. Like, hallelujah, like the angel of the Lord told John in the book of Revelations, don't you weep, hallelujah, for the lamb has already been slain. I'm here to tell somebody, don't you worry, don't you weep, don't you cry, don't you fear, for the lamb has already been slain. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. I still remember the day, hallelujah. I still remember, hallelujah. Everything, everything. But now, but now I'm no longer walking in guilt. And I'm no longer walking in shame. Yes, every man has ups and downs. Every man goes through seasons. This is life. We're human. We're flesh. Amen. We're flesh and bone. We're going to go through some trials. We're going to go through some situations. We're going to go through some hard times. We're going to go through some times when things may not feel good, when things may not look good, amen. But I'm here to tell you, don't forget of what God's done for you. Don't forget how he picked you up and he turned you around. Don't forget how he placed your feet on solid ground. Don't forget, hallelujah, how he dusted you off. Don't forget how he embraced you, amen. Don't forget forget how he saved you, how he raised you, hallelujah, how he lifted you, hallelujah, how he made you a new creature, don't you forget, amen, no matter what the enemy might say, no matter what the, your situation or your circumstance might say, don't you forget, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Can anybody make that commitment? Amen. No matter what you're, what it looks like, no matter what you're going through, amen. Can you make that commitment before God? Can you make that commitment before the King of Kings? That Lord, I know I haven't been perfect. And I know I haven't been, amen, the man I'm supposed to be. I know I haven't said the things I'm supposed to be. I know I haven't been the woman I'm supposed to be. But Lord, right here before you right now, I hallelujah with witnesses around me Lord I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever Lord I'm making a commitment amen that I will serve you I'm making a commitment Lord that I will turn to you I'm making a commitment Lord hallelujah that I will put you first that I will make you my answer I will make you my number one I will make you Lord Jesus the center of of my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Like we were talking about Moses. Amen. That moment, amen, with the burning bush. I imagine, amen, these moments that stood out to them. These moments that stood out to men of God. These moments that stood out in their lives. Do you remember the moment, amen, in your life? Do you remember, amen, that moment where your life was forever changed? For some of you, it may have come on a Sunday, amen, at an altar call. It may have come during a worship service. For others, amen, it may have been because your friend invited you to a Friday night service and you had nothing else to do, amen. But when the word of God was preached and the word of God came in like a double-edged sword piercing you amen began to work in your life amen began to convict you and began to show you everything that you were and everything that God was hallelujah
and God is, hallelujah. And how that moment changed your life. And how you were sitting there, tears rolling down your face. Not knowing why I'm not crying so much. Why does it hurt so much? Amen. Why am I feeling the way that I'm feeling? The first time you came to an apostolic altar. Amen. And you just happened to raise your hand. And tears began to just stream down your cheeks. Amen. And your body began to shake uncontrollably. Your tongue began to move and you couldn't control it any longer. Do you remember that day? Do you remember the day your life was forever changed? The moment, amen, you were no longer the same, amen. Your heart was somehow broken but made whole at the same time, amen. Your heart was hurt, amen, but it was healed in that moment. Do you remember, hallelujah? I still remember and I choose, amen, to serve the Lord forever. I choose, amen, Lord, that I will serve you. Church, in the days that we're living in now is a commitment like none other. Now is a commitment, amen, like we've never seen before. This world, amen, that we're living in, I don't know what may come tomorrow. I don't know what tomorrow may bring. I don't know what next week may bring. But while we have the opportunity, church, I encourage you, amen, to stand your ground and continue to worship God. Continue to pray, amen. Continue to lift your hands and proclaim His goodness, amen. Continue to fight on. Continue to give him all the honor and all the praise. Hallelujah. Make a commitment in your heart that no matter what happens, no matter what valley I go through, no matter what my situation looks like, I will serve you and I will love you. Hallelujah. 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 If you can, lift your hands. Amen. I encourage you to lift your hands where you're at. Amen. And just make a commitment before God. Tell Him you love Him. Tell Him you're committed to Him. Tell Him a hallelujah. The same way that He's told you. He won't leave you and He won't leave you hanging. He won't forsake you. Lord, I will do my best to serve you, Lord, with every, every muscle in my body, with everything that I have. I will love you and I will serve you. Jesus, hallelujah. Oh, Lord, hallelujah. Make us stronger, Lord. Make us better. Give us the wisdom that we need. Give us the discipline that we need, Lord. Give us, hallelujah, the understanding that we need. And give the church of the living God the strength that they need in the days that we are living in, Lord. Hallelujah, that we would be men and women of God, that we would stand our ground and continue to trust in you. Jesus, we love you right now. We thank you, Lord, for everything that you're doing, Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus' name, Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah.